Hello and welcome to ShowMeAcademy.com. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create basic charts in Microsoft Excel 2007. One of the most graphically appealing things that you can do with a spreadsheet is to create charts. No matter how good my data is, no matter how meaningful it is, it's still just a bunch of numbers. And if you want to take these numbers and put them in front of others to have some type of graphical appeal, you're almost always going to have to create some type of chart or graph to give them a better view of the data that you're trying to communicate. And luckily, Excel gives us a lot of powerful options to quickly and easily create these charts. We'll step you through some basics of that right now. First of all, what I'm going to do, I have this big chart that has all this data from the NFL season. And I'm going to first select the data that I believe I want to have in my chart. So, for example, I know I want to show the teams. So I'm going to select this column because this column has every one of the teams. And maybe I want to create a chart that just shows the number of third downs made by any particular team during the season. So that would be this column right here. And I already have the first column selected, that's the team. I'm going to select the second column by holding the control button down. And as I'm holding the control button, I will click on this column as well. So now, you notice that both of these are this light blue. It means that both of those columns are selected. I have selected the team and the third down made column. So I'm going to create a chart that shows for each one of the teams how many third downs they made throughout the season. What I'm going to do is click on the insert tab up here. You start by default on home. We're going to move over to the insert tab. And from the insert tab, we're going to concentrate on the charts section here. Notice we have all types of different options for different types of charts that we can add. We can create column, line, pie charts, bar charts, area, scatter, and even other charts. It gives us uh, a host of other options as well. I want to keep things simple here for this tutorial. We're just going to move along with the column chart. And from here, when I click on this button, the column button, you notice it gives me a host of, of subsequent options, different types of columns that I could use, 2D columns, 3D columns, cylinder, cylinders, cones, pyramids, etc. Uh, just for the purposes of illustration here, I'm going to concentrate, first of all, just on this 2D column. So I'm going to select this first option under 2D column. And notice what it does is it immediately takes my data and creates a chart that it plops in the middle of the screen here. It's named the chart third down made, and it got that name from the title of this column here, the column J. And on the vertical axis, I have uh, a scale going from 0 to 120 to show the total number of third downs made. And on the horizontal axis, I have all the teams that are represented in my chart. Now, you might notice, first of all, that it doesn't actually list all the team names. What's happened here is that these values are getting squeezed along the x-axis because there's not really enough space there to list 32 different teams. So instead what it's done is it's listed every couple of teams. We start with the New England Patriots, and then we skip the Green Bay Packers and go to Dallas Cowboys, and skip the New Orleans Saints and go to Indianapolis Colts, etc., etc. Because the chart area that we've created doesn't have enough room to accurately display 32 different team names along the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is notice that while I'm here in my chart area, I have this cursor that's common to all of Excel, and we'll have the four, aerial, four arrows pointing in four different directions. That basically means that I can click and gra grab this chart and drag it to another area on the screen. So I'm going to click on this with my left mouse button and hold it down and drag it up here into the upper left. And now once I do that, I'm going to go over here to these dots, these four dots here. That basically means that this is a handle here that I can use to drag this column, or excuse me, drag this chart out to the right. So when I mouse over that, notice my cursor changes to the two arrows pointing in either direction. And I'm going to left click on that handle and drag this over to the right. Oops, went a little far, far there. Let me grab that back. And now you'll see 
that when I look at this on my screen, I have enough area to display the full names of all 32 teams. Well, I have enough area at least to explain, display them all in the x-axis. Now, of course, it still crunches some of them down. For example, this should say New England Patriots, but instead it just says New England dot dot dot. Because along the vertical axis, we don't have enough area to show all these team names. So again, I'm going to look here at my chart itself, and when I scroll over it, notice when I get down to the edge, I get to where my cursor changes to the up and down arrow. That basically means that I can now drag this chart down a little further, and as I do so, it gives me more space along the, excuse me, the vertical axis for me to show all these team names. So now I've created this chart. This chart shows the third downs made for each one of the teams. I've created enough space to show each one of the teams along the x-axis here, the horizontal axis. And I've made it tall enough so that I can actually fit the entire name of each team in along that vertical axis. Now, of course, what I did is I took this chart and I plopped it right over the top of all, all my data, which may not necessarily be very convenient. So I'm going to select this chart and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to select Control X and I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom of my data and I'm going to hit Control V. And when I do that, notice it takes my whole chart and plops it down basically at the end of my data. So it's still easier for me to see all the data up here and I still have my complete chart down here. Now this chart is dynamic meaning that it's dynamically tied to the data up here. If I change the data in this chart, it will change the chart itself. So for example, here we have New England Patriots, and you'll notice that when I mouse over it, it even gives me the, the exact value. During the season, they had 92 third downs made. But if I go up here and actually change this value to 392, I can go down and look at my chart and notice it's drastically changed my chart. Now the New England Patriots have this very high value and every other value looks much smaller in comparison. It dynamically resized the entire chart in order to accommodate that new value that I have put in for the New England Patriots. If I go in and change this back, maybe I make it much smaller, I make it 22. Now you can see that my scale has been decreased and also, the New England Patriots value is much smaller to represent the new value. This concludes the tutorial. Thank you for using ShowMeAcademy.com.